great. Um, Bill Eckert was here last year. He's going to be here this week. Um, on Well, actually, he'll be here on May 1st. So he is offering a workshop on how to reduce your taxable income as well as to increase your income. Uh, the workshop will be held Tuesday evening, April 30th, and repeated on Wednesday afternoon on May 1st. So if you're interested in that, please sign up. There's information in the bulletin on this, okay? All right, in conjunction with Earth Day, the green team will be having a drawing for the stainless steel water bottles. You see them in the, in the gathering space. So just stop by that table and uh, enter your name, and they will draw winners. Uh, also, the recycle, the metal recycle that was supposed to be today, um, the guy was here only this morning, and then he left like around noon. So if you brought something this afternoon, I'm sorry. Um, but uh, that's all we could do. All right, our Respect Life Ministry will be holding a diaper drive to help supply diapers and other items to Raymore Baby Grace, an organization that helps mothers in need. So there's see the bulletin for items that are needed. You may bring the items to the gathering space the weekends of May 5th and 12th. Our special collection this weekend is for our Altar Society. Our Altar Society supplies the parish with all our hosts, wine, altar cloths, server robes, and many other liturgical items that we use for Mass. Okay? All right. That's all the announcements I have. Do we have any birthdays? Anybody celebrating a birthday? Nope. Anna, make sure we, Anna, Anna, you make sure you unmute. Okay. All right. No birthdays. Any anniversaries? Anybody get married today? Stand up. Congratulations. Good kids, and come to Mass afterwards. <laughs>
and I in him will bear much fruit, because without me you can do nothing. For those times we have failed to keep room in ourselves for Christ, let us seek our Lord's mercy. Lord Jesus, you are the vine and we are the branches. No? Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you command us to bear fruit. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you glorify the Father. Lord, have mercy. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, constantly accomplish the Paschal mystery within us, that those you were pleased to make new in holy baptism may, under your protective care, bear much fruit and come to the joys of eternal life. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. When Saul arrived in Jerusalem, he tried to join the disciples, but they were all afraid of him, not believing that he was a disciple. Then Barnabas took charge of him and brought him to the apostles, and he reported to them how he had seen the Lord, and that he had spoken to him, and how in Damascus he had spoken out boldly in the name of Jesus. He moved about freely with them in Jerusalem and spoke out boldly in the name of the Lord. He also spoke and debated with the Hellenists, but they tried to kill him. And when the brothers learned of this, they took him down to Caesarea and sent him on his way to Tarsus. The church throughout all Judea, Galilee, and Samaria was at peace. 
It was being built up and walked in the fear of the Lord. And with the consolation of the Holy Spirit, it grew in numbers. The word of the Lord. For those who fear him, the poor shall eat and shall have their fill. They shall praise the Lord, those who seek him. May their hearts live on forever. to the Lord. All families of the nations worship before him. They shall worship him, all the mighty of the earth. Before him shall bow all those who go down to the My descendants serve him. They shall tell of the Lord to generations yet to come. Declare receiving justice to peoples yet unborn. These are the things the Lord has done. A reading from the first letter of St. John. Children, let us love not in word or speech, but in deed and truth. Now this is how we shall know that we belong to the truth and reassure our hearts before him. In whatever our hearts condemn, for God is greater than our hearts and knows everything. Beloved, if our hearts do not condemn us, we have confidence in God and receive from him whatever we ask because we keep his commandments and do what pleases him. And his commandment is this, we should believe in the name of his son, Jesus Christ, and love one another just as he commanded us. Those who keep his commandments remain in him and he in them. 
and the way we know that he remains in us is from the spirit he gave us. The word of the Lord. Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus said to his disciples, I am the true vine, and my Father is the vine grower. He takes away every branch in me that does not bear fruit, and every one that does, he prunes it so that it bears more fruit. You are already pruned because of the word that I spoke to you. Remain in me as I remain in you, just as a branch cannot bear fruit on its own unless it remains on the vine, so neither can you unless you remain in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. Whoever remains in me and I in him will bear much fruit, because without me you can do nothing. Anyone who does not remain in me will be thrown out like a branch and wither. People will gather them and throw them into a fire, and they will be burned. If you remain in me and my words remain in you, ask for whatever you want and it will be done for you. By this is my Father glorified, that you bear much fruit and become my disciples. The Gospel of the Lord. Today we're hearing from the Gospel of John, and this setting for this Gospel is actually the day before the crucifixion. This is at the Passover meal that Jesus and his disciples and all those that were in that upper room were celebrating. And um, Jesus is, did quite a few things that evening before he was uh, imprisoned by uh, the, the, the ruling party. But um, Jesus is teaching them, and he's using this opportunity to give them a few uh, more lessons before he, the passion takes, starts to take place. So he says to them that, that he is the true vine. Jesus is the true vine. The Father is the grower. So God is the one that takes care of the vineyard. Jesus is actually the vine. Have you ever seen a vineyard? Have you seen the grapes? You know, there's, there's lots of movies. There's lots of uh, different vineyards. Even around here, you can go to and see all the grapes. And you see just rows and rows and rows of, of the vines. And the branches are all kind of interconnected. You really can't tell them apart one from another. And those branches have to stay attached to that vine in order to survive. If they become detached, they wither and they die. So like around here, you know, every time we have a storm, you know, all the dead branches on the trees all fall off. 
and you know, usually my driveway is littered with, with tree branches from some of these old trees that tend to shed more trees than they grow leaves. Um, so, you know, if the vine is not strong, the branches are not going to survive. So Jesus is that vine, and Jesus is strong, and Jesus wants us to produce fruit. And so we have to remain attached to the vine. And if we do, we are going to produce much fruit. That's where the grapes come from, from the branches. And when we do good things, we produce great grapes, and those grapes are, are uh, picked and processed, and it produces a mighty fine wine. And therefore, we get to enjoy that, and we have that every time we celebrate Mass. So what is he trying to get across to his disciples? He's trying to tell them that if we try to go it alone, we're detaching ourselves from the vine. And we might think we will be happy, but we will end up dying to ourselves. We'll end up dying because we're no longer attached to that vine. And we may still live in this world, but we'll be spiritually kind of lacking, spiritually kind of withering. You know, Jesus talks about the pruning that happens. You know, any good vineyard grower is going to prune all the weeds and everything out so that the, the, the vines have the best chance of producing the most fruit. And so it's an example for us to constantly remember that we need to constantly look at what do we need to prune in our own life. What is keeping us from producing good fruit in this world? Where are we suffering? Where are we not finding peace and happiness? You know, all during Lent, that was the goal, is to figure out and pray about where am I lacking? What am I doing that's producing bad fruit? What am I doing that's producing anger, jealousy, uh, laziness, all of those? And that's where we have to ask God to help us to understand ourselves and to help us to understand that we're interconnected with each other. You know, we live in a culture that's, that values individualism very, very highly. And individualism is a good thing, as long as you remember that you live in a community. And so the community is filled with individuals, and if we all kind of work together, we could do so much more. But if we only think about ourselves then we're not fulfilling our own baptismal promises and we're falling more into our own original sin and choosing selfishness and that's what starts detaching us from our Lord. So think about in your average everyday life, how do you produce fruit? How do you do good things for one another? When's the last time you brought a smile to somebody else's face? Not your own. When's the last time you maybe did something really nice for somebody without asking? Children, when's the last time you actually helped your mother out or your father out without asking? Those are little things that we can do each and every day. And those little things add up. And all the little things that we do produces some great fruit if we're willing to take that step. Together, let us profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty.
St. John wrote, we have confidence in God and receive from him whatever we ask. In perfect trust, let us bring our needs before our Lord. For God's holy church, that by remaining connected to the true vine, it may bear great fruit for the glory of God and the service of all people. Let us pray to the Lord, hear our prayer. For all of the world's different people, that we may find harmony in learning to recognize our connection to each other as branches of the same holy vine. Let us pray to the Lord, hear our For all who feel bound by their past, that God will heal and free them so that they may live life fully. Let us pray to the Lord, For all who feel cut off from God, friends, themselves, or life itself, that God will show them how they are connected and from whom they can draw life. Let us pray to the Lord, hear our prayer. For the intentions of members of the Respect Life Committee and those that help to preserve the sanctity of life, let us pray to the Lord, hear our prayer. For all gathered here, may we follow Jesus' commandment to love others in word and in deed. Let us pray to the Lord, hear our prayer. For our beloved deceased, especially Joseph Anthony Pusateri. May they now enjoy true peace in the eternal life of God's kingdom. Let us pray to the Lord, hear our prayer. God of peace, with tenderness and compassion, you call us away from sin to the fullness of life in your presence. Hear our prayers that by your grace, we might build communities where all will flourish and find welcome. And we ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. We sing together number 872, I Will Be the Vine, number 872. Thank you. 
pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. O oh God, who by the wonderful exchange effected in this sacrifice have made us partakers of the one supreme Godhead, grant, we pray, that as we have come to know your truth, we may make it ours by a worthy way of life, through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but in this time above all, to laud you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. Through him the children of light rise to eternal life, and the halls of the heavenly kingdom are thrown open to the faithful, for his death is our ransom from death, and in his rising the life of all has risen. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exults in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic host sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, James, our Bishop, the clergy, and all your children. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever.
At our Savior's command and for my divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope of the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Peace at home. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called the Supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word of my soul shall be healed. We sing together number 950, Take and Eat. Number 950.
Let us pray. Graciously be present to your people, we pray, O Lord, and lead those you have imbued with heavenly mysteries to pass from former ways to newness of life through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Thanks be to God. We sing together number 871, We Shall Rise Again, number 871.